Welcome, welcome. I just want to open in prayer. So God, I thank you that you are praiseworthy. We get to spend some time praising about God being in us, his Holy Spirit being in us. We have the helper, the advocate. We can read his word. We can understand it. We can comprehend it. And we are not going to let our thoughts, strongholds, or the enemy tell us otherwise. So God, I just thank you that that is true, that we are your sheep. We hear your voice. We have authority to tell the enemy to go, and we can we read, we can listen to your word, we can comprehend it, we can speak to others about it, we can share about it, and they can understand because the Holy Spirit makes that all possible. So I just thank you for that reminder, and I just ask you to help us set everything else aside so we can focus on you right now and praise you because you are praiseworthy. And I pray protection over our internet signal spaces and just that anybody else who would benefit from coming on live now uh, finds that time in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are going to get started with um, these lies that can come with reading the Bible. So it seems like it's it's quite common that people can feel condemned when they read God's word, not convicted. Conviction and correction is good and from God, pointing you to God, like turn away from that, turn to God. It is love for discipline and correction, but condemnation, shame, guilt, not from God, from our flesh. <laughs> so we get to know that it is not from God and we get to remember who we are defined by god right it's him that we're looking toward to tell us who we are and who he is so we get to read the bible from a new covenant mindset so we can have this old covenant mindset which they were constantly having to try and strive and be good and they were having to sacrifice animals regularly to be washed clean of sin. And we get to know now that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because of Jesus blood, because he was the perfect sacrifice. So we're not continually striving. We're walking out the fruits of Christ in us. And so God is no respecter of persons, right? He wants everybody to be saved his will isn't always done on the earth because not everybody's saved we know that but he desires all of us to be children of god and when we've given our life to jesus we are children of god we are the righteousness of god in christ jesus that's how we're defined and we are chosen and beloved so acts 10 34 to 35 in berean standard bible it's all in brand standard Bible, unless I say otherwise, it says, then Peter began to speak. I now truly understand that God does not show favoritism, but welcomes those from every nation who fear him and do what is right. So everybody's, everybody's welcome to be set free, right? And to be led by the Holy Spirit. Second Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So again, he wants us to be set free. Romans 8, 1 through 4, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And remember, we are Jesus is seated at the right hand of the throne of God, and we are seated with him, it, well, in him, in the heavenly places. And so outside of being in Christ, there is condemnation. My flesh can condemn me, <laughs> the enemy can condemn me, but I get to stay hid in Christ where there is conviction, direction, but not condemnation. And so anyway, we're, yeah, there is no, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For in Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life sets you free from the law of sin and death. Just what we were talking about. We are in the new covenant now. We are free from the old because Jesus fulfilled it. It says, for what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man. So in flesh, right? As an offering for sin. 
So he paid the punishment for sin. He thus condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteous standard of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So we get to just, again, be reminded we are new creations in Christ. We are chosen, beloved, and we get to stand knowing that Jesus paid for us to walk not condemned, but set free. And so the first song is I Am Defined by Far Flung Tin Can. We played it last week, but just that reminder that God is the one who tells us who we are, not our flesh, not the world, not the enemy. And so uh, the link for the song will be in the description of this video. So enjoy it on your own. I'm gonna press pause here and we will play it together for those who are live. So yes, we cannot earn what God really gives. And that's that whole piece of we're in the new covenant. It is free. We're not earning anything. You know, they weren't really earning before. They were sacrificing to wash their sins, but we are free. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When we stay in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. So um, the enemy has no rights on any of us, right? We have the Holy Spirit within us and the kingdom of God in us. We have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son. And that is the place that we live from now is the kingdom of God. And so we're co-heirs with Christ Jesus, right? We have his name to use. So uh, we can stand against any of the attacks of the enemy as children of God when we stay in Christ and we are beloved. So uh, Luke 17, 20 to 21, uh, this is King James. It says, and when we when he was demanded of the Pharisees, so when Jesus was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. I shall neither, neither shall they say lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And that is just such an odd concept in the natural, but so is the Holy Spirit in us, right? And that we're in Christ seated at the right hand of the throne of God in heavenly places, but it's true. And so um, I know we've been talking about being condemned when you read the word or confused, and that is just not from God. And it's so common because of course the enemy doesn't want us to spend time in the word. Jesus is the word made flesh. He doesn't want us to understand it, comprehend it, look at it, listen to it, nothing. Um, and so we get to have a little bit of righteous indignation that he would do that. Because, And sometimes it's easier to even notice it in somebody else, like, you know, speak over somebody else, life, that they are his sheep, they hear his voice, and he has no right to tell them otherwise, and he has no rights to tell you otherwise, and neither does your flesh. So <laughs> be led by your spirit and know that you have the word in you. So we get to stand in that authority and tell maybe any fear of understanding or condemnation or guilt or shame um, or confusion, especially confusion to just because I think that's the most common to go in Jesus name. No rights on us as children of God. And we get to proclaim that again for ourselves and for others in the body of Christ. And it is powerful. So we get to understand the word through the Holy Spirit teaching us all things. So Luke 10, 19 says, says um, we're back to Brian Standard Bible for the rest of these. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. And really confusion, condemnation, guilt, shame, it is, it's harming us and it has to go. So uh, and James 4, 7 says, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we're not just resisting the devil, right? We're submitting to God. We're praising him, thanking him, focusing on him, keeping our eyes on him. That alone is resistance. So anyway, Every Giant Will Fall by Ren Collective is our next song. And it is true. <laughs> so we just get to stand here and remember that every giant will fall. All of that condemnation, it is not from God. So it has to go. So I'm going to pause here and the link for this video will be in the description and we will play it now. Mm -hmm. Nothing is impossible with our God. That's what stood out of that. And I know we're really talking about, you know, just being able to read the word and not be condemned and not be in guilt and understand where we are 
as children of God and everything, but that is just a big truth that helps break all those fears that nothing is impossible with God. We're not looking at this with natural eyes. So I just, yeah, I want to say that. Help us all remember that, God. Nothing is impossible with you. Help us not limit you. So we are not going to let the enemy tell us who we are, right? We kind of started with that. And um, we get to stand up against anything that the enemy or just our flesh or another human or through the enemy really says that doesn't line up with God. And um, the next song is Hey Girl by Ann Wilson. And it says, I'm a child of God. I'm a blood bought, battle fought, all my shame, long gone, made new child of the king. And 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. Or in King James, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I just love both of those. Um, so we don't let the enemy or just our flesh or old lies tell us we can't understand because we literally have the word in us, right? We have it written on our heart and uh, we have the Holy Spirit to lead and teach us in all truth. So we can understand and he has no right to send confusion or even just that expectation of confusion, which can more come from our flesh and these strongholds or faulty core beliefs. But um, yeah, we, we can, or condemnation or that expectation of condemnation when we read, right? That's also not from God. So we get to remind ourselves and the enemy that we have the mind of Christ. You know, we can run the mind of our flesh or we can be led by the mind of Christ, but we have it available. So 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, for who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. So yeah, any, any fear that we get, also, when we read is not from God, right? We are, we're not talking about the awe and reverence of God. It's like that fear <clears throat> that isn't of God, that awe and reverence of God means that we're putting whatever it is above God. Like God can't do the impossible through us that, um, you know, it says in Ephesians three, that it, that he can do more than all we ask, think, or imagine according to the power at work within us. So through the Holy Spirit in us, like he can do more than we ask, think, or imagine. So we don't need to fear. We get to exalt him above whatever other natural thing that we're, we're fearing and trying to lift up above God. First John 4, 18 to 19 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. The one who fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. And we know the fear involves punishment. Jesus took on all the punishment so we don't have to. So if we don't recognize that, we're still thinking there's fear. And then that being perfected in love is the completion of the love. We've talked about this before, that it's that actually fully receiving God's love, giving it back to him, receiving it for ourselves, giving it to others, like completing what the love is meant to do. And we love it all because he first loved us. So our love for him comes out of that overflow. It's just so good. So um, Jesus took on all the punishment of sin and death for all time. And that is love. That's his demonstration of love. So we just get to receive it and believe it and stand in it. And so our song is again, Hey Girl by Ann Wilson. And we just get to remind ourselves who we are. And if you're a guy, you can say, hey, guy. <laughs> so I will put the link for this song in the description of the video. I was just thinking about the part of the song that's, you know, I'm a child of God. I'm a blood bought, battle fought. And I just were bought with the blood of Jesus because he shed it at the garden at the whipping post and at the cross. And I'm so grateful that he did that, that is just love for us. And then battle fought like, you know, three days and nights separated from God after the cross. And um, I just, I don't know, I wanted to take a moment to thank Jesus for what he did and thank God for giving up his one and only begotten son to uh, set us free so that all our shame is long gone, right? Because we've been washed clean with that blood. And um, 
Yeah, we're made new and we're children of the king now. We've been adopted into the family line and he is our father. So good. So, um, yeah, we get to, again, look at the word of God without condemnation, without um, confusion. We are children of the king. This word is written on our heart and there's so much just talk, even in the church and things about, you know, too hard to understand and without the Holy Spirit. Yes, <laughs> but we have this new covenant mindset that we have the Holy Spirit in us and we can, we are Jesus sheep. We do hear his voice. So we get to give permission for the Holy Spirit to speak into our heart, for the word to speak into our heart, for it to be that double-edged sword that cuts between soul and spirit, right? So it, it gets to our heart and it reveals or discerns the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. We're giving it permission to do that. And we get to, you know, open our eyes and see and hear and, and enlighten the eyes of our imagination and all of that. And so um, we get to remember that we're in this new covenant. The veil has been ripped in two when Jesus died on the cross. So second Corinthians three, 16 through 18 says, but when anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Cause right before this, he's talking about um, the old covenant believers and anybody still under that mindset, there is a veil when they speak the law, but when we turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the glory of the Lord are being transformed into him and into his image with intensifying glory, which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. So we get to benefit from the word of God in us let it wash through us right just cleanse us we get to fall in love with it um Jeremiah 15 16 says your words were found and I ate them your words became my joy and my heart's delight for I bear your name O Lord God of hosts so that's what we want right for it to be our heart's delight and Proverbs 4 20 to 23, my son, pay attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, do not lose sight of them, keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to the whole body, and then guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life, and after this, I know the next few verses, it talks about, you know, not looking right or left, just staying, it just makes me think of in Proverbs 3 that we're going to trust in the Lord or submit to the Lord with all our heart, acknowledge him in all our ways and he makes our path straight. So we just get to keep our eyes on him. It is good. So the song that I chose is word of God speak by mercy me. And I just wanted to sing it as this permission, like God, yes, discern the thoughts and intentions of our heart. Help us see you more speak into us in Jesus name. So I'm going to pause here and I'll play the song in the description uh, in the description of the YouTube video will be the link for the song. So yes, thank you, God, that you are enlightening the eyes of our understanding. You, Your spirit is in us. We are being washed by the water of the word as we choose to look at it, listen to it, be in it, and just sit and listen to you, even not reading or listening, but just listen to you. So thank you, God, that you are speaking to us and we are your sheep and we do hear your voice and you call us by name and lead us out and we follow. So um, we know that we are in warfare. We are in a war, a spiritual battle, a spiritual warfare, right? Not against flesh and blood. We're not against humans, but the enemy working through them. Um, he has already been defeated. The enemy has already been defeated, but we get to stand on the word of God and just remember that Jesus is the word made flesh and Christ is our solid rocks. So we get to stand on it and not let anything in the world that goes against the word define anything for us. So we get to have that clarity and truth from the word that sets us free. 
2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says the weapons of our warfare are not the weapons of the world, right? They're not flesh and blood. Instead, they have divine power. Our weapons, the word of God, have divine power and praise and um, prayer has divine power to demolish strongholds or faulty core beliefs. Right? We tear down. <clears throat> Sorry, we tear down arguments and every presumption set up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So we get to tear down anything that exalts itself above God. That would be anything again that we fear, right? That is exalting it above God, saying God can't do the impossible and get rid of that thing. So John 10, 10 says the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come. So Jesus has come that they may have life and have it in all its fullness or have it in abundance. So I just, yeah, it's simple when we look at that, like God, good enemy, bad, and anything that exalts itself above God, whether it's our thoughts, core beliefs directly from the enemy or somebody else, we get to put it under submission, under Jesus's feet. So if it comes to steal, kill and destroy, it's not from God. And first Peter five, eight and nine says, be sober minded and alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls, a, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in your faith and in the knowledge that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And that piece is that, that persecution, that battle of the faith constantly to decide to believe God and not the enemy. It's, it's a battle. And we get to remember that the devil prowls around like a roaring lion. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, the devil like a roaring lion. So he can sound really big. And if we let him, he can hurt us, but we get to stand in the faith on the solid rock of Christ and know who we are and submit to God and resist him. And he flees. And so that is just that reminder. So we are going to, play No More by Becca Shea and just kind of speaking to that no more enemy. Like I know who I am now and I know that the Holy Spirit in me is bigger than anything you can throw at me. So we're just going to remind ourselves that, remind the enemy that, remind God that we know who the, who we are, who he says we are. And um, I will pause here and the link for this video will be in the description as well. And as we kind of finish with our last song, it's in Christ alone. And that is, it's in Christ that we have the Holy Spirit. You know, we kind of started reminding ourselves of that, right? We've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son. Christ is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And we are seated with him in him in the heavenly places. And so um, it's the Holy Spirit in us that allows any of this to be true, that we can understand the word of God that we can stand against the enemy if there's confusion or condemnation or fear. And so it's in Christ that we get to be set free from the law of sin and death, from the punishment of sin for all time, and um, that we get to be led into all truth and be completely set free. So Christ is the truth that we stand on, not anything else. There's facts all over the place, but the truth that sets us free is Christ, is the word. So 1 John 2.27 says, and as for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But just as his true and genuine anointing teaches you about all things, so remain in him as you have been taught. So we know he teaches us all things. We don't need to limit him. The Holy Spirit can teach us all things. Take that literally. Uh, and then we get to remember that we get to ask the Holy Spirit for help, right? The, he, he's in us to teach. So we get to, we get to ask, we get to receive, we get to open our heart 
So 1 Corinthians 2, 14 to 16, and we've already read 16, but we'll read 14 to 16. It says, the natural man does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man judges all things, but he himself is not subject to anyone's judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And yeah, that's why we want to be led by the Holy Spirit, right? What a better mind to be led by. And um, the Holy Spirit is the truth, leads us into all truth, teaches us all things. And the enemy is the father of lies. So we get to just have the word of God help us separate those and the word and the spirit together, though. We get to use the Holy Spirit to teach us what the word says. John 16, 13, and 14 says, however, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and he will declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me by taking from what is mine and disclosing it to you. So it is the spirit and the word we want and need both. So we get to have the Holy Spirit in us to lead and guide us into all truth. Jesus is the word made flesh together that it's all truth, all freedom. So it's in Christ alone that all of this is possible. So that's the song that we will play and enjoy. The link will be in the description. So oh, beautiful. So God, I thank you that your Holy Spirit is in us, that you are the word made flesh. You're our solid rock. You're the cornerstone. We are your body. You are our head. That means we submit to you. <laughs> so we're not running different directions from our head. Help us submit to you. Um, thank you that you do discipline and convict us, but it's the flesh and the enemy that condemns us. So we get to stand and really know who you are, know who we are, tell the enemy to flee. We can read the word. We can understand it. We are not condemned when we are in Christ. So I just speak that over everyone that we know who we are. Everybody in the sound of my voice now or later knows who they are. If you've made Jesus Christ, your Lord and savior, you are his sheep. You do hear his voice. And if you haven't, he's seeking after you and there is an open door in the Bible. I know before, before I knew the Lord, the Bible truly was confusing. It didn't make any sense. And it seemed very dark. And then I just realized God was real <laughs> and that Jesus was Lord. Didn't understand much, but when I decided to dedicate my life to him, I opened the word again and it was night and day. It was so different. There is understanding. Over time, I received a whole bunch of lies that, that I actually couldn't understand. And I forgot how different it was night and day that there was this understanding. And, um, you know, it, it would grow over time when I didn't receive those lies. So I just, I just speak against those lies that we can't, um, hear from God or understand his word or the Holy spirit isn't our helper and can't, can't help us understand. And, um, that we don't have the body of Christ as well. So I just thank you, God, that none of those things are true. And what is true is that we are your children. We hear your voice. We have the word written on our heart and yeah, we just praise you. Thank you for being our savior in Jesus name. Amen. Well, join us live someday and share this anywhere. <laughs> Bye.